What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Running Gun with AJ and Co. We are currently on episode number five, which is post processing. So in this episode, you're gonna get to see some behind the scenes action of me working on a campaign. So everything from shooting the campaign and then editing the pictures right after using Adobe Lightroom. And then he's gonna be doing the video part on Final Cut Pro. And then we're gonna show you some tips and tricks along the way. So the first thing you wanna do when you open up Lightroom is import your photos. And you just wanna to go to file and import and all your photos should show up in your library right here. From there, I'm gonna click on develop and this is where you can start the editing process. So for this campaign, I got to work with Herbal Essences to promote their new Bio Renew line. And since it is a shampoo and conditioner, I decided to shoot in the bathtub and I bought flowers as you can see to match the bottle of the shampoo and conditioner. I also have a plant just to give it a more tropical feel matching the bottle. Instead of using this picture, I decided to reshoot the entire campaign just for a more cleaner look. I did this in my kitchen with all natural lighting and I had the shampoo and conditioner bottle right in front of me as you guys can see here. This is actually the final result. I'm going to go ahead and show you the before. So this is after and this is before. I'm going to go ahead and reset this photo and show you guys how I started this from scratch. So I'm just going to go ahead and click reset right here. A good thing to keep in mind when selecting photos because I know it can get a little bit overwhelming is if you like a specific photo, you just want to click the hotkey P on your keyboard and this will go ahead and pick the photos that you selected. And then from here, you just want to click on flagged and this is where you'll find all of your flagged photos. So it's easier to keep in mind of which one you want to edit. So starting with this photo, as you can see on the left side right here, I've already created a bunch of presets in different names and I just kind of go back and forth between the preset depending on the picture but in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and start from scratch to show you guys what I like to do on the right side you have your basic adjustments you have your temperature your tint exposure contrast etc and I like to start off going from the top all the way to the bottom so starting off with temperature I'm just gonna toggle this more to the right side because I do like my pictures a little bit warmer and then since the greens are coming up a little bit too strong I'm gonna go ahead to tint and bring this to the right side and get more of a red tint just to kind of balance the photo and then now scrolling down to exposure bringing this up just a little bit to brighten things up and you can kind of see that my face is becoming a little bit more overexposed and this is where the highlights come in and this definitely comes in handy for if you guys are taking pictures in front of a window or a skyline and it's blown out you can take the highlights all the way down and then it'll kind of balance the photo a bit. And you'll kind of see along the way that I like to go back and forth between each setting just to see what works for me. When it comes to editing, there is no right or wrong. You just want to play around with it and see what works for you. So for contrast, I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. And then moving on to shadows, you can see that I'm not wearing that much black, but there is a little bit of shadow right behind me. You can bring this up to lift the shadows and it'll kind of brighten the photo a little bit. And then I'm just going to go back up to exposure and then just bring that down and then for whites you can definitely see there is a lot more white than blacks in the photo you can either bring that down or bring it up in this case I'm just gonna leave it in the middle same for blacks kind of the same concept as shadows you can bring it up if you wanted to or bring it down in this case keep it centered again for clarity depending on what I'm shooting sometimes I'll bring this up and what this does is sharpens the photos it can be a little bit overwhelming at times so I just toggle with it see what works if you bring it down it tends to give the photo a little bit of a glow in this case I'm just gonna bring it to about 15 typically for dehaze I don't really touch this at all and then for vibrance saturation since I do like my pictures a little more muted, I'm going to bring this down to a negative 5 for each one. And then scrolling down, you'll see tone curve, and this is something that I don't typically touch at all, so I'm just going to hide that. Below that, you'll see hue, saturation, and luminance, and this is one of my favorite elements on Lightroom. This is where you can manipulate every single color. Another quick tip when shooting is to make sure that you're shooting in RAW format and not JPEG. It just gives you more control and you'll be able to manipulate every single detail when editing in post. Starting off with reds, reds can be a little bit tricky because lips are red. So if you bring the saturation down, it can really mute the lips. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as is. 
So same concept for orange, it can be a little bit tricky, especially if you want to mute whatever's in the background or if you're wearing orange or even this bottle it, since it is a little bit too bright. If I bring the saturation down just a little bit, you can kind of see that it plays a factor in my skin tone. So you just want to be mindful of that when you're working with oranges. And then the little trick that I like to do if I'm looking a little bit paler than usual is I'll take the luminance and I'll just bring it down a little bit and what this does is just deepens up my skin tone. And that is pretty much it. It's the same concept for every single color. I don't really have any other colors to show you guys so this is something that you guys can play around with with your own photos. And now moving down to detail which is another one of my favorite tools. You can already see that sharpening the default is already at 40. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit, maybe to 70. And then a trick I like to use is noise reduction. And I like to bring this up to about 40. And what this does is gives a overall glow to the face. Especially if you're shooting in low light and you do have some noise in your photos, you can use this tool to reduce it and it'll give you that overall clean look to your photo. So here's a close up before and after the photo. You can see before here and then right after. You can just see that the noise reduction adds a little bit more luminosity to the skin. So moving on to lens corrections and this is something I typically do for all of my photos. I'll just click on enable profile corrections and usually it detects the lens that you're using. In this case I, I did use a Sigma 50 and you can see that it helps bring back the distortion of the photo and since it is a little bit brighter than usual I'm just going to bring the vignetting down to 50 to kind of bring back the balance of the photo. And that is pretty much how I edit my photos. I like to keep things a little bit more simple and clean. Here is the before and after. Like I said earlier, there's definitely no right or wrong. Play around with Lightroom and your own photos and just find what works for you and most importantly, just have fun. All right, so throughout this video, I'm going to be talking about importing footage, organization, choosing selects, choosing music, laying down the first clip and exporting. Pretty much the basics in five minutes. So the first step is to collect all the cameras that you just shot with. Right now I'm just grabbing the memory cards from my A7, my drone, and the vlog camera. Next up grab your memory card reader. Mine is USB-C to SD and micro SD. Make sure you treat your memory cards with care and you're uploading everything properly. To save time I've already pre-created these folders. Uh, as you can see on the right I've made a folder for each camera. Before I get into that, I want to dive a little deeper into my workflow in regards to my organization. So I'm just going to open up my drive and to give you guys an idea of how I've been cataloging my content since 2013. Throughout each folder, you'll see everything organized from year, month, date, underscore, uh, wherever I was. And this has definitely given me a more streamlined process of editing and just knowing where things are. I think that's one of the biggest challenges as a video editor is to to know actually where your footage lives. Uh, now I'm going to jump into Final Cut Pro uh, which is the editing software I'm going to use for this tutorial and I've already went ahead and created a library and that's just by simply going up here to file new library and uh, naming it Iceland. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create four different events. You can do this by either hitting option N or you can just go over to file and then create a new event. And now I'm just going to name these by day. So just day one, day two. You get a little more detailed. This is just what I'm using as an example. Day four. And the reason why I like having them in evented off into dates is because you don't want to have too much content you don't want to have all your content in one event it kind of just helps you with organizing things and like i said it's this is just like a personal preference you don't have to uh, organize your content this way sometimes i know people just put everything into one folder and they just import all their assets from there and this is just my way of doing it and i know some of you guys are trying to figure out that workflow for yourself so hopefully this helps so i just imported everything into their events going according by day and now I'm going to go over the importance of choosing selects and I would typically be doing this either within the same day or the same week just so that it's fresh in your mind and as a video editor I feel like one of the hardest things to do is to actually get to the edit so what I'm gonna do now is go into my day one selects and choose pretty much one to five second b-roll clips to establish the area 
And this is just to give the viewer a sense of what this place looks like, smells like, and probably sounds like. Uh, I don't know too much about smells like, but you get what I'm trying to say. So one, you know, one to three second clips. That should be good. And I'm literally just picking and pulling. And eventually your selects will look something like this. And this alone gives me an idea of what the place looks like. So I added a song that was a little more on the eerie side just to give off that feel and flow of the cloudiness and coldness that we had to go through. It's even good to use external audio sources from time to time. It's up to you, mix it up, mess around with it. Dear guest, welcome to Kjellrevik Iceland. The local time is uh, 10 o'clock and the outside temperature is 9 degrees Celsius. So this is the final step, exporting, and Final Cut makes it super simple to do. See here on the top right, I'm going to hit that share button, I'm going to go over to master file and then it's going to give me a couple different options and I'm going to select on settings and then switch it up um, if need be, but H.264 for YouTube and what I need to do is perfectly fine. I'll save it to the desktop for keepsakes and that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you guys for watching, we hope you found this video to be helpful. Stay tuned for the next episode where we'll be covering social strategies. So now that you've got your content covered, we're going to show you how to maximize your audience. And how to distribute on different platforms such as Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and like a blog.